Hey everybody, welcome back to the Kit Cave. Uh, been a while since I last posted an update. Um, that's because I've been busy doing things um, <laughs> and amongst working, obviously. Um, thought I'd just do another qu quick, a fairly quick video for for everybody, just as a, a, a progress update to the the current USS Enterprise uh, one fourteen hundred scale. Uh, Enterprise D build. Um, I believe where I left off last time, um, I was still messing around with the uh, the electronic side of things with the Arduino. I did a little bit more tinkering around with it, not so much to the sketch, but more so I just swapping out different speakers, trying to get some better sound uh, sound quality coming out of it. Um, I know that from the the sound quality from the last video, it didn't you know the the video didn't pick up the sound all that well. Um, it did sound a lot better in person, um, so I was playing around with that a little bit. Anyway. Um, where I left off last time, of course, I decided to um, start working on the, the neck piece um, of the dorsal because um, I wasn't happy with it. I wasn't happy with the stock the stock part, um, more so with the detailing that was on, where, on there. And, of course, I'm trying to accurize this, this model kit to get it as close to a rendition of the, uh, the next genera um, Star Trek Generations uh, miniature. So looking at lots again, looking at lots of different reference images, and I was working on that, and I'll come to that bit in in a little moment. Um, first and foremost, though, I just want to do a very very quick little um, little quick product review, really, and it's something that I've been using for 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 quite a while, and it's this thing that we're seeing in front of us. It's a little rotary tool, and as a lot of us in the in the hobby, we all have rotary tools of various sizes and descriptions, you know, from different makes and models. But this is one that um, the wife bought for me. Must have been about three, maybe four years ago, as a bit of a birthday present. And I've got to be honest, when I do my model kit builds now, uh, and I have been for the last several years, this is the one I probably use. This tool is the, the tool that I will use at least, I'd have to say, 99, if not 100% of the time for doing everything. All of the sanding, all of the drilling, all of the fine work that needs to be done, all the cutting with it. This is the one I use. It's just a fantastic little rotary tool. Um, very, very inexpensive. I think it costs about £25 uh, off of Amazon. Um, so impressed with it. I've been meaning for quite a while to pick up and buy a second one, but I'd have got two. It's always handy to have two, so you can have different bits in and just quickly swap out the different tools. And so I did that yesterday. So I ordered a new one on, on, on Amazon, which should have been arriving today and hasn't quite arrived yet. But hey, ho, never mind. It'll get here. And it's this little thing. Um, this this little branded tool. I don't know if that's, you can see that quite well on camera. It's probably coming out a little bit backwards, maybe. Um, Jin Jinwa Ginar. I don't know how you pronounce that, uh, but that's the brand. There's the model number. Uh, model number TPK PT014. If anybody's interested, but a really really good little tool. I mean, just to hold it in your hand, it's fantastic. You can hold it like a pen. You know, you can hold it like this. Hold it like that. It's just such a great little tool to use. Three speed settings on it. Um, slow, obviously slow, medium, and high. On the back, it's got some gumph. It says, okay, made in China. There we go. No surprise there. Um, 3.5 volt rotary tool. Standard charge plug on the bottom there. Um, it says no load speed. At the slowest, it will run at 5,000 RPM, and at the highest, 15,000 RPM, which I tend to find is more than enough for when you're dealing with these plastic model kits. So it's a really good little tool. I, I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, really, really good. When you buy one of these in the little pack, not only does it come with the tool and, of course, the lead to charge it up, it also comes with a little box like this, which is full of little bits and pieces and accessories. I'm not going to go through every single little bit on here, but it's a mixed bag of all your, your bits and pieces in here. So, you know, you're little grinding bits in here and you know sanding discs and all these kind of things doesn't come with this cutting disc this is an addition as are these bits and i've added and added to this obviously we've all got lots of these little bits in our stash from all the different rotary tools that we have but it does come as a little bit of a starter set so somebody that's new getting into the hobby comes with a handy little case like this and some little bits to get you going really good little kit um, good little tool i love it as i said ordered another one yesterday so that i've got two Anyway, there's my little product review done. Great little tool. Well worth the investment for, you know, for 20, 25 pounds. Really good, handy little little thing. It doesn't take long to charge, maybe three hours, fully charged, and the battery lasts 
for absolute ages on it. Brilliant. And I've been using this a lot, a lot over the last few days. Um, and I'll come to that in a moment. So progress wise, where are we up to? Yes. The neck dorsal piece. Um, I've got to be honest. I got to the point last week. I had a basically it was a week of nothing but failures. Now I've been quite fortunate. I've had two weeks, um, two weeks annual leave that I've been using from work. Um, so I've been spending a lot of that time uh, working on this kit. Most of it has been on this neck piece to try and get it accurized. And uh, by the end of last week, I was ready to chuck it in the bin. It's been an absolute nightmare, and it's more so been a nightmare trying to accurize the piece because I've never done it before. You know, I'm no, I'm not an expert model builder. You know, I just, I, I go out into my cave. You know, you know, noises happen, steam billows out, and then miraculously, by the end of all of the, you know, the clinking and clattering, a model appears, um, quite by chance, I think. But anyway, so it's, I've never gone to the extent before of trying to accurize a stock kit piece to the kind of level that I have. You know, I've always been one of those modelers whereby I've bought aftermarket parts, which you, you know a lot of us have done with this kit, and certainly I've got the the parts from Motion Picture Miniatures to go onto this kit, um, or photo etch set details, and that that's been my lot. Never have I ever taken apart a stock kit part and pretty much blanked the whole part to restart it all over again uh, to try and accurize it to this extent. And so you know. Yeah, a frustrating week, a lot of time, a lot of hours spent for pretty much failures every single time. Um, here it is. Here's the offending part. Now, of course, what I was trying to do, I was trying to accurize the windows, trying to get all of the windows in. So going to the reference images of the studio scale model, trying to accurize the windows, get all the windows in place. Um, so that I could make a, a mold of this piece and recast it into clear uh, polyurethane resin. And it's the clear one that's going to go on the kit because trying to window drill the, the windows out and get them nice and clean and neat and tidy is a, almost practically impossible. Um, drilling the windows, yeah, that's fine. That's the easy bit. Getting them clean, that's, that's the hard bit. Um, but there we go. So it was a case of the first iteration was cutting out all the bloody windows. Marking all the windows, that was easy. Marking all the windows in, in situ where they needed to go and then laying all the windows down, that took absolutely hours. I was using just box standard PVC tape like this. This is pretty good stuff. If anybody's interested, I picked this up, pack of six um, from a local, uh, local what we call pound store here in the UK. Pack of six for three pound, different colors, PVC tape, relatively low tack stuff. Really, really good, really easy to cut as well. You know, and this would be good for, for masking fine details as well on model kits. So, so good buy that was. So basically, it was using this, laying it out on the mat here, using these bad boys, a little close up headset, magnifying jobbies to hand cut every. Every single window and they are tiny to get it in scale I mean the, the smallest windows down here they I was cutting them at 0 0.5 millimeter width by 1.2 millimeter height I mean bloody tiny and then painstakingly putting them all on getting them all into position and getting it looking neat great that worked all right it was a lot of time spent and I'm, I do mean it was hours <laughs> absolutely hours spent doing that that was great the bit where it went wrong, and again, it was a, a mistake on my part, was the plan was to spray it over, spray it over with some primer paint to build up the surface layer to then peel back the individual windows, thus leaving the little, the little recessed windows great. And that was where it went wrong. Because like an idiot, I went too overzealous with the primer paint, sprayed too much on, built the primer up too much it was too thick so that when i went to take the window masks off it was just an absolute mess so it all got sanded off it all got sanded back so quite disheartening i mean at that point i wasn't entirely happy with the piece either because originally i had all of the panel lines rescribed in and i wasn't to be honest i wasn't very happy with my uh, my scribing that I'd done. Some of the lines were, yeah, you know, they were okay. Some of them were a little bit wonky in places, and it's a very hard piece to try and get, you know, flowing straight lines on when you're scribing. Very difficult to do, and I was never truly that happy with them anyway. But I, you know, I kind of bared with it. Anyway, it all got sanded off. So I thought, right, what am I going to do now? 
I could do it again and then run the risk of um, screwing it all up with more paint and I really don't want to do that. So I was racking my brains and I thought, oh, okay, actually, let's try a different technique. What I actually did was laid on some strips of tape like this and actually I experimented, laid down some strips of tape, cut out a few little windows, laid it onto a bit of card like this. And then what I did there, I don't know if you can see that, make that out on camera. Camera might not be showing this up very well, a bit blurry. Is then I skimmed it over with some putty, with some filler, and then sanded it back. And all I did was wet sanded back the putty to the surface of, I don't know if you can just make that out, there's still one in there. There's a window just using the depth of the tape itself. Okay, and what that kind of created, it created the panel line. Because when you look at the you know very, very close up images of the studio scale model, the panel lines on the north or on the, the the neck piece here they are actually raised where the windows go in the, the panels themselves are slightly raised from the surface of the model it's a very fine detail that can get lost in a lot of photographs but when you look at well i've got a photograph um well i think i i found it on uh, there's a chap who is called my my enterprise I'll, I'll put the link into this this description on this video i'm sorry if i'm waffling guys i can't remember what the link was but basically he went and saw the the six foot studio scale scale model somewhere in america a few years back took loads of photographs shoved them into dropbox and said look you know here's all the reference images so bang that's what i've been using and there's one close-up shot that shows a window right to the end and it actually shows the the panels are slightly raised they are raised panels from the kit itself and then the windows of course are, are recessed into those panels so with that in mind that's the plan with that so i laid down some tape skimmed it over with putty wet sanded the putty back so literally just using the depth of the actual tape itself to create not only the raised panel but also the windows and i've got to be honest it's hard to see this looking at this camera and it's not focusing in at this point but they are really really clean and again, just very gently, I picked out the um, picked out the blue tape because that's the actual window bit there. And really clean, crisp lines coming out with a slight recessing there of the windows in place. So I thought, great, that's the way to go. So let's do that then. Proof of concept was there. Let's put that onto the model, which is exactly what I did. So. I spent some time, different color tape. This time I cut tape that measured 0 0.5 millimeters in diameter, big long strips of paint, and laid it on the model, then cut the panel lines out of this PVC tape, which is rough measuring, you know, at two millimeters per strip, laid it onto the, the neck piece. I started to work my way like that to get all the panels in there. Then I took off, uh, what essentially was then the, the, the green tape, so then just leaving the marking line of where the panels are, then recut out all of the windows again, hours worth of work, reapplied them all the way to the, to the model kit, skimmed it all over with the putty, then started to wet sand it back, and it failed again. Again, it failed. Um, again, trying to get an even amount of sanding across the whole of this, was very very difficult and when i started to then peel the window temp you know the little window uh, stickers out it was flaking all of the um all of the putty off um it was just a mess and it just fell and again it was just hours upon hours of work just up in spokes um yeah and so i was at that point on friday where last friday i was like right you know what i wish i'd never bloody started this i wish i'd never started or had the thought about accurizing this sodding piece because i'm done with it very disheartened but there was a glimmer of hope while i was laying in this tape i kind of thought well actually this is actually working quite good it's actually working very good so why don't i just do that why don't I just, rather than try and do, you know, try and get the raised panels in and the windows all in one go, I think that's, you know, making hard work for myself. Let's just concentrate on one bit and accurize it at a time. So this is where we are. This is kind of what it's looking like now. Now, again, it's quite hard to make out. But what I've basically done here is, again, recut out all of the tape, same measurements. So in the recess, so the panel lines that we got here, 
and the bottom ones measuring two millimeters. So two millimeters for these ones. The recessed ones were cut at a 0 0.5 millimeter diameter. Now these measurements were actually taken from the stock, from this piece before I even started to do any accurizing to it whatsoever. This is this is how it was originally molded um, out of the box. And this is where these measurements come from. And laid in all the tape like this. Um, at the top here, using the, the images of the reference, um, the studio reference model, you can actually see these panels are bigger than down here. So I elongated them. So these are measuring three millimeter um, distance, three millimeter thickness and laid it in. The good thing with this, so that was yellow tape used in the recesses there, green tape for the panels. Then it was a case of pulling out the yellow tape to leave just the green because this what this is doing these are the raised panels to replicate what we see on this the studio scale model and it's done both sides now again I know it's hard to try and I don't know if you can see that on camera but if you look at the lines using this tape laying it on and following the natural curvature of the model piece and laying it in these are really fluid very clean fluid lines <laughs> I know it doesn't look it at the moment, and that's because we're seeing some of the bare plastic and all the mistakes that I made underneath the actual tape. But these are running really smooth, really fluid, crisp, clean lines. I mean, really, really come out well on that. So that's fantastic. I'm really happy with that. Again, that was hours worth of work done, but there we go. Slightly, I don't know if you can see it. It's very hard to make out. They are slightly raised. Now, what I did is I doubled up. The green tape so there's actually a double layer so every single panel line is a double layer of tape and that's just to build a little bit of depth it's not very much it's very hard to see and it's imperceptible certainly when you're looking at it on camera but it it looks a lot better in person i'll try to get a better shot of this later on uh, possibly in another video then it was cutting in again trying to follow what we see on the studio scale model as best as i can cutting in the lines cutting in down here cutting in down the edge there, trying to replicate it as close as I can. And that's where I'm currently at. I'm a lot happier with this now. A lot of hard work, a lot of frustration, a lot of head banging and throwing toys around in the living room and you know, kicking dogs toys about all over the place in sheer frustration, but we're, we're there. I'm a lot happier. So that's the panels back in place, accurized as best as I can accurize it to the, uh, the, the um, the uh, studio scale model and if you look at it from the front there again I'll try and do this as best I can they flow nice and nice and crisp and flow very very well and they match up pretty damn good both sides they're pretty much you follow one line along and round it matches almost almost within a variation of a 0.2 percent variation almost almost spot on so very happy with that so a lot of hard work a lot of frustration to get to this stage so what does that mean? Well, what that means now is that this piece is now going to be cast as is. I'm not going to start farting around with any windows at this point. This is going to get cast. There's going to be, you know, there's going to be a mold made of this piece first. Okay. Um, got my mold box ready to go. Here it is mocked up. I'm just waiting for a delivery that should have been arriving today along with my other little tool and I haven't turned up just yet, but hey ho, we still got tomorrow and the rest of the weekend to go waiting for some mold, um, some silicone, um, silicone to come so I can start the creating the mold of this piece and what's going to happen is the mold will be made first I'm going to te um, test the mold out I've got some um, polyurethane resin that's been set in the garage unopened uh, about a litre of the stuff uh, for the last couple of years it's the white stuff but that's okay I'll do a test cast of this in the, in the white just to make sure that the, the mold's okay and it casts uh, reasonably well and it comes out fine and then on that white piece that's where i can start to experiment about then getting those windows in somehow okay but at least that bit is 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 good to go and i'm a lot happier a lot happier with this how it is now and that's simply just using you know pvc tape and spending some hours sitting down cutting it laying it in being as precise as i possibly could with it to get it to that point so yeah a lot happier with that now, of course, the way that I'm going to mold this, I'm not just going to dump it in here straight away and chuck a load of silicone on it. That would be stupid. And I've already made stupid errors with this. 
what I'm going to do is going to mix up a, a little bit of silicone first. I'm just going to do a very, very thin skin or skin layer, as people like to call it, just over the top. Very, very thin, very thin layer. And that's just going to seal all this in. And by doing that thin layer, it means there's going to be no air bubbles in the surface here because they'll come out with that very thin layer. But also it will mean that I can make sure as I apply it on and smooth it on over that all that silicone is going to get down into these tiny little recesses between the panels and capture all of that detail. Once that, that thin skin layer has been put on and I'm happy with it and it's cured, then it's a case of putting it into the box, into the mold box and the rest of the silicone poured in to then bind with what's already been laid on here. And that's the mold bit done. So there we go. That's the stage I'm at with this piece. It's getting there. It's been frustrating. I'm not going to lie. Um, as I said, the amount of times I've nearly thrown this piece out the bleeding window. <laughs> and it's my own fault because I decided to go this route of trying to accurize it as best I could. Is it 100% accurate to the Studio's scale model? No, of course it's not, but it's pretty damn close. It's better than the stock kit, kit part is, even just at this stage it's better than it the stock kit piece is but there we go um yeah so that's the plan with that get it molded get the mold made get a test piece cast and go from there um and then probably work on the t the test cast piece rather than messing around with this anymore keep this as the master and try to cast a really good part in that white poly through your thing resin and then work on at least i can use that that white cast piece to get the windows in experiment and then even start to look at accurizing of course down here the torpedo launcher bit and the air docks at that stage so that's that bit so very frustrating uh week and a bit of messing around with that anyway what else have i been working on then so again apologies for the long video and the waffling it's just been one of those it's been a couple of weeks i'll tell you guys this kit just drove me up, up the wall drove me up the wall now i have heard tell that uh round two are going to be reissuing this kit and they're going to do it back in the clear um if anybody from round two is watching for christ's sake please please accurize that neck piece and also please get rid of the raised panel lines on all the other bits because they are a pain in the ass and they look horrible Anyway, that's my my rant and moan over, guys. Apologies for that. So what else have I been working on then? Of course, I've been working on the bottom piece, starting the process of getting rid of all these horrible raised panel lines that are on here. Um, some people choose to leave them on their kits. That's their choice. Absolutely fine. I don't like them. They're coming off. It's not accurate to the studio scale model, so it's all coming off. So again, like a lot of other people have done, got there with some razor blades and I've been, you know, scraping and scraping and scraping and sanding and scraping all these raised panel details off. Now, I'm not really happy with that scraping method, I've got to be honest. You know, it kind of leaving, it, it's hard to see it. You might be able to pick it up on camera, but the surface that it leaves is not great. It's going to take a bit more work, you know, priming over, wet sanding it back, priming it and wet sanding it back to... You know to get it looking a little bit more beautified because at the moment it's looking rough as hell but it'll all come out in the wash guys it'll all come out in the wash it's just going to take a little bit more time a little bit more farting about with um, so that's what i've been doing on this piece getting rid as best i can all of those raised panel lines and then starting the process of drilling out the windows yay more windows i'm sick to death of bloody windows on this kit now I've got, I've got to be honest, I think I need a holiday to get over this holiday uh, working on this kit. But there we go, drilling out the windows. So I've done one part already. I don't know if you can how well that's picking up on camera. Um, they're looking pretty bloody good, nice and clean, um, as clean as I can possibly make them. Uh, really going going quite well, and it's a bit of a technique I've got. So on you know, one of my initial videos, the process with this was going to be, I was going to cut these windows out using this knife or a knife or one of these hobby knives. Uh, because by hand cutting them out, you can get them really, really quite looking quite clean, um, quite neat and tidy rather than just going at it with a, with a drill. Um, time consuming as a process it is, it's having good results because they are looking really, really good. I know it's kind of hard to see this on the camera today because i've got the camera turned around the other way so i can see what the hell's going on 
um, but they're looking pretty, pretty. I can't see if it's picking it up. Looking pretty damn decent, pretty clean. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. I am using a drill bit to do it though. I am hand cutting and using a drill bit. Again, over to my trusty little tool. What I've got here is a tiny, tiny, I know you probably can't see this on the camera, you might be able to, I don't know. This is a tiny little drill bit. It's a 0 0.3, 0 0.3 millimeter little drill bit. Tiny, tiny little, little bit here. Now, I picked up a pack of these on eBay. They were actually quite reasonably priced. I think they were only about four, three or four pounds for a pack of, pack of 10. Come in a pack of 10, all the same size. I've got plenty there. I picked up two of these. I've got 20 of the damn things because, yeah, being that small, um, those of those of us that are experienced that have used drill bits this small in the past for, for model building know how frequently these damn or how easily these things break. However, that being said, I've got to be honest, this particular bit has done all those windows and I've started on that side and it's actually held up really, really well. I'm quite surprised. I'm quite surprised it hasn't snapped already. So it's actually holding its own. So basically what the technique is, is into the drill bit this goes. Okay, Into the drill bit that goes. What I'm then basically doing, getting my, uh, getting these things on so I can go close up. So my magnifier, magnifier headset. And again, if anybody's new to this hobby and watching this video and you haven't picked up one of these, well worth the money and recommended for getting up close and doing detail work. I'm going in and I'm just very, very gently using this in the actual window itself, using the slowest speed setting. And I'm just letting the drill bit do the work of recessing out that plastic in the middle. Now, before I'm doing that, I'm going to the back. And as you can see here, I'm thinning thinning the plastic where the windows are, where the windows are that I've already pre-drilled with marking holes so thin that plastic first and then it's a case of going in just letting this very thin drill bit do the work of reaming out the middle bit of plastic in here get rid of it and it does come out a little bit rough to be fair but it gets it through it takes the hard work out of it you need to be quite careful with it get it through job done once that bit of plastic is then reamed out, then it's over to the knife to then start to get the knife in there and actually shave and use the blade to shave the edges of the plastic and clean it up and get it tidy. And so, why not? I'm going to show you that little process now. So bear with me again. Apologies for the long video. It's going to get a little bit noisy with the motor going, but I'll show you what I mean by the process. So on goes the headset and I'll move it on down. So let's have a look where are we at to where are we up to where are we up to so we're up to this little window i'm going to be working on i don't know if you can pick that up i'm going to be working on this little window down here not sure if this camera's picking it up pretty well today but this little window here so this is what i mean so i'll try to do this as best i can on camera for everybody to see the process so here we go drill bit is in get it on on with the magnifying lenses so I'm just gently Starting at the top, and just letting the drill bit do the work of reaming out the plastic. I'm not pushing, and this is a, a difficult, this is a tricky bit to try and drill because it won't sit flat. So it's quite hard. Try and get it in the light, steady my hand a bit. So I'm just letting the, the drill bit and the motor do the work of reaming out the plastic. Keep it going through, coming through. Again, I'm not pushing too hard with this drill bit because that's what will snap them. Just let the bit and the motor do the work of getting through that plastic and it's going. You can feel it and it's going. It's coming through. Coming through. And there we go. And it's through all the way through a little bit of a either side to clean up and that's that window through again don't know how well this camera is picking it up today but it has gone through we're looking over here and again to the eye it's looking quite rough to begin with 
but that's okay. Next thing I do then is I go straight to the back. Now, when you do these windows, and again, I'm sorry if I'm preaching to the to people that are already experienced, but for any uh, any new people to the hobby, this is for them. I'm going to the back here. And this is where I'm using the knife now to cut out some of the back material on the back of the window. Because to be honest, working on the back of the windows is just as important as working on the front. To get the, the windows nice and clean, to get a good bit of light coming out and have them looking nice and neat and tidy, working on the back is just as important as the front. And of course what that means is, on any model kit, let's say for argument's sake, if you've got on a model kit, let's say you've got a hundred windows to drill out, you actually haven't, and you've got two hundred windows because you've got to do front and back. <sighs> Hooray! And we all love window drilling. Of course we do. It's great fun. Yeah. Anyway, get on with it, Steve. So again, I'm not being too precious with the back it is just the back of the window but i'm just taking out some of that material so that's the back done flipping it over to the front and this is where this piece is quite awkward to work on when you're drilling these windows because of these you know the pylon struts here you just can't lay the damn thing flat it's, it's really quite awkward but looking down through my magnifying lenses then back to the front again i know it's hard to see it on camera but i can't do this i'm going to change position here and this is where i'm going to Kind of do it like this, laying the tip in, getting it into that open bit of window, and again just using the knife, just carefully just going in, and I'm just shaving. Basically, I'm shaving the window. I'm shaving down the sides of the window, and I'm getting it opened up, opened up, getting the sides nice and straight and elongated, best I can each way it takes a bit of time to do this guys <laughs> look a little bit more and again that's where these magnifying uh, headsets come into their own really good just a little bit there shave that one out shave that down a little bit more get it a bit more square easy long day to windows let's have a look at that Getting there, just a tiny little bit more on the bottom edge here. Get it in, just a light little shave, shave it up. Literally, I'm shaving just tiniest, tiniest, minuscule little bits out at a time. As I said, it's not a quick process, but it's a worthwhile process to get these windows clean. <sighs> and getting them looking good. And actual facts, that's pretty much holding that up to the light. That one's nearly done already. Which is good. There's a little bit more onto the back then. As I said, the back is just as important to do as is the front. And again, I'm not being too precious with the back here. I'm just taking off a bit more of that plastic. Because quite often when people drill out windows, you can see the fronts are all looking nice and clean. But when you look through the window, it actually doesn't look that great because they you know you don't you don't necessarily spend the time on the back to clean it up, to get it looking neat and tidy. Um and I'm just as guilty of doing that in the past as anybody else. So, you know, it's worth spending the time. <sighs> there we go. So that one's now through. That's looking good. I'm happy with that. Again, I don't know if you can pick that up or the camera's picking it up too much. I've got to be honest, the, uh, the front camera on this iPhone doesn't, doesn't want to zoom in. It doesn't want to focus in on anything. It's not looking not great, is it? Anyway, there we go. There's the window. There's the window drilled out there. That one there is looking pretty damn clean. I'm happy with that. Next thing, little small file, little needle file. I'm just going to the back first, just with the tip, the very tip of the file itself, just working in at the back, just, you know, a little bit of a light sanding just to get rid of any little snots and snickets of plastic that are still there. Because <sighs> doing this process does create a lot of plastic snow. Then I'm going to go to the front, do the same thing, just very gently, very lightly, just with the tip, just work it in there, just to give it a bit of a light sanding. Same again. Keep going until I'm happy with it. Go at the top, 
down to the back, on top the bottom I should say, a bit like that. <sighs> and up to the light, and that's looking pretty bloody good. I'm not happy with it, I'll go just to the knife again, just on the back edge, just a tiny, tiny little bit. Tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Let's do that. A little bit more. <laughs> All the way up to the light, that's looking good. Now, of course, I am looking at it through magnifying lenses. Yeah, looking really, really good. So there we go. That's the window done. Okay, bit of a tiny, timely process when, you know, I could probably just use a bigger drill bit than that. And I've got, a, you know, a set of this size again. Got a set like this, all different sizes, starting from 0 0.5 millimeters all the way up. I probably could go to the 0.5 or 0.6 and just get in there and just and drill them all out but then that's where the windows end up looking crap <laughs> for, for want of a better term um, whereas this process gets them looking really neat really tidy really quite clean are they 100 percent perfect no they're not of course they're not but they're pretty damn close i'd say they're 98 to 99 percent pretty clean um, let me see if i can swap this camera around now and show you it from the other side so it's going to look a little bit better for you so you can actually see what i'm talking about i'm just going to move the camera around this way so we get the light coming through from the living room turn it up like this uh can i swap it around probably not now no i can't well done that's me and technology there you go because i've already started filming but there you go hold it up to the light you can see now hopefully make out how much cleaner those windows look and how how good they look um, using this method again it's trying to pick it up on camera as best i can there we go but looking pretty damn good and that one there was the one i just worked on this one at the top flip it around get the light going come on steve sorry guys my camera work today is very very shoddy i do apologize I don't know if you can make it out, but that's looking pretty, pretty good. Pretty bloody good. I'm happy with that. Well worth the time. Well worth the time to do that process. But looking, looking really good. So there we go. I'm actually happy. <laughs> I'm actually happy with those windows. Not the windows on this piece. This piece can go to hell. Um, <laughs> but there we go. There we are, everybody. That's my process. That's my process for getting these windows drilled, and that's the process I'm going to follow for all the other parts of the kit to get them done. So uh, still a lot more to go yet, but at least I've now started working on these bits. Um, again, I'm not happy with this technique of shaving because the surface looks rough, but I'm just going to have to go with it because it's probably the best technique, technique to use and then just do some work of primer wet sand it back fine grit like a 2500 fine grit wet sand back spray over again just to you know get this looking a little bit more pretty but there we go cracking on with it and in the meantime still working on this to get this bit accurized so i'm just waiting for the silicone to turn up just waiting for the silicone to turn up so i can crack on and get this one sorted out so hopefully it'll be here by this afternoon if not by tomorrow i can get that bit done i'm cracking on but there we go there we are everybody apologies for the long video apologies for the waffling apologies for the ranting uh, but it's been a while since i posted and you know it's probably going to be a fair few a uh, few more weeks before i post another update video purely because the nature of the beast is now this is all the work that's going to happen to all the other bits raise panel lines off beautify beautify this bit get all these windows drilled out um, on all the other bits first before then i can start to go back and start to install all of the accurized you know the motion picture miniature accurized resin parts and you know sort out all the lighting on the inside you know so it's going to be some more weeks and weeks and weeks worth of just prep work to be done but of course on this particular kit it needs to be done it needs to be done and as i said it all comes out at the end of the day or it will come out in the wash at the end of the day is what i'm trying to say but there we are 
there we go everybody well thank you everybody thanks for watching again apologies for the long video and the waffling as i always do um sorry for the very crap tutorial that i just showed there <laughs> it's not very good getting it on camera but i thought i'd just show people the, the technique um that i use now i'm not saying that the technique i use for these windows is the technique to use it's just my technique that i use um other people have other techniques that they like to use you know each to their own if it works for you go with it it's just the way that i do it uh, but there we go i'm a little bit more particular with things when it comes to these models much to my uh uh my detriment i think which is why i'm having so much problems with that neck piece but anyway there we go again everybody i'll wrap up there sorry sorry for, for, for again i keep saying it i keep apologizing sorry for the long video sorry for the waffling um big thumbs up and a big thank you to everybody that's hit the like buttons on previous videos and for the subscribers it's very much appreciated as always and for any comments that people uh, post um really great stuff thank you to everybody for for doing that um i'll be back with another update as soon as i can be with the uh, you know to show some any more substantial work being done might be on this piece with the mold and having this piece cast in clear polyurethane resins to see how that's going to come out uh potentially but there we go thanks everybody you will have a very great weekend and uh, i'll catch up with everybody very very soon we'll take care now bye bye